Well, my name is Steve Janicello and I'll be doing the lecture method of communication today. The name of my message is called The Black Hole and it gets its name from this refrigerator that is in the office where I work. I remember the first day I went and visited my new office. We uh, have a big house at the church I serve and inside of this big house there's this kitchen and there was this really cool refrigerator. And I thought to myself, oh, it's gonna be great to work here because I'll be able to bring my lunch or cook, whatever. Won't have to go out to eat, I can save money. And I, I remember my first day of work, I went to the office, I put my lunch into the refrigerator and went away and did some work, came back a few hours later and my lunch had disappeared. And I thought, okay, what happened to my lunch? So the next day, I did the same thing. I packed a lunch, I put it in the refrigerator and went back to work and a few hours later I came back and my lunch had disappeared. So I don't know what it is but anytime you put anything in that refrigerator it kind of disappears like a black hole. So that's what I call the refrigerator at the church. It's a black hole and uh, a black hole is something that sucks everything into it and it disappears forever. And I thought about how we have uh, black holes in us, that it doesn't seem like anything can really satisfy us. We do all kinds of things to fill the black holes that we have in our life, but those black holes never seem to be filled. Have you ever noticed this? Here's a few examples like uh, you go and you buy something and just a few days later after you buy it, you um, experience the product and it just doesn't seem to satisfy your need. You thought it would meet your need, but it doesn't satisfy your need. You end up taking it back or maybe buying another thing that's similar because that product couldn't totally fill your need. Or here's another example. You could be talking with someone online and you could be sharing some thoughts, you know, with somebody and after talking with them for a few minutes, you can even sometimes feel empty because you feel like there's the lack of a personal connection. You're communicating, but you're not seeing the feedback of the other people in their eyes or in their body posture. And it just kind of leaves you empty. And uh, you're more lonely than you were before you started. And here's the big idea. You can't fill that black hole. How about this? Think about this. Maybe you started dating somebody and you think you're not going to be lonely anymore and they're going to meet your needs, they're going to make you happy and you start dating them and you realize you're more lonely once you started dating them than you were before you started dating them. See, material things cannot satisfy the needs of our heart. And in fact, I've got a little object lesson here. It's, it's a little bagel. You see a bagel has a hole in it. And, it, this bagel is kind of like our life. Our life has this big empty hole, black hole, that calls us and wants to be filled by us, but we don't know how to fill it. And the truth of the, of the matter is this, that only Jesus can fill that hole. When you have a right relationship with Jesus and you're experiencing him through prayer, studying his word, and through salvation. See, Jesus fills up that hole so that we're not thirsty or hungry for things. See, so many people try to fill spiritual hunger with material things, and it never truly satisfies. So Jesus said to us, he said, I am the bread of life. Anyone who comes to me shall never hunger or thirst. So saying all that, Jesus taught an important principle when he was on uh, the mountain and he was given his sermon on the mount to the children of Israel. And this is the principle he said, and it just kind of blew everybody's mind. Uh, it says in Matthew 5, seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain and when he sat down, his disciples came to him and he taught them what we call the Beatitudes, which is really how to be happy, what true happiness is, how to find true happiness. And in uh, chapter 5, verse 6, he says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Now this is a really crazy statement because, you know, anytime I'm hungry, 
you know, I want to I wanna fill myself with something. I want to eat something. And when you think of hunger, it's not a good thing. We try to avoid it at all costs. And, you know, many of us, we've never really been hungry. Like, I've been in third world countries where you see people that are very poor. They don't have enough to eat. and They're really skinny. And you can really tell how poor our culture is by how skinny their dogs are. Because you go over there in third world countries and those dogs look pitiful because they're hungry, there's not enough food. In America, we have abundance. We have so much of everything. And our abundance still doesn't seem to satisfy our basic needs, you know, for hunger and, and, and thirst being satisfied. So Jesus, he redefines what hunger is because when we think of hunger, we think it's bad. But in this case, Jesus says hunger is good. Now, how can hunger be good? Well, it's really simple. Uh, it's that when we're hungry, it leads us to Jesus. Jesus, like, put a mechanism in us of some sort where we would, we would find him through our hunger. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. And, and so we're to, to eat of him. We're to consume him on a daily basis and nothing else really fills us all we can find from material things is temporary happiness so jesus said happy are those that are dependent on him that need jesus happy are those who who cry over their sin happy are those who allow god to to meet their needs and happy are those that are hungry god wants us to be hungry and uh, I want to give you a definition. What is spiritual hunger? It's a desire to be holy. And listen to this. This is from Psalm 51.6. It says, Behold, you delight in the truth in the inward being, and you teach me wisdom in the secret heart. Paul believed that <clears throat> knowing Christ was directly related to his personal hunger for holiness. Holiness means to be set apart, to, to be uh, focused on the purposes of God, to be different than earthly things, to be heavenly minded, to live for eternal purposes and not earthly hunger. Here, read this with me, Philippians 3, 7 through 11, and it says this, Whatever gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord and for those whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ and be found in Him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes through the law, but that which is through faith in Jesus Christ, yet the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. I want to know Christ, yes, I want to know the power of His resurrection and participation in His sufferings, becoming like Him in His death and somehow attaining to the resurrection of the dead. So here's, here's the thing that we can infer from, from Jesus' teaching and from Philippians 3, 7. And the first thing is everything that we can desire apart from Christ is trash and worthless. Paul was hungry for the power of the Holy Spirit to be working in his life, and he knew it was directly related to his desire to be holy and set apart for God's Word. Paul wanted to live in his new life as a Christian. He wanted to experience persecution and rejection from this world and from unsaved people. Paul wanted to live a life as a servant, and he wanted to live a resurrected life. So, I want to ask you this. What about you? What are you hungry for? What are you trying to satisfy your heart with? What are you trying to fill the emptiness of your black hole? Are you trying to fill it with things that can't truly satisfy? Oh, in our culture, so many people are into materialism, possessions, clothing, technology, sports, all these things. I want to tell you something. You can have everything and have nothing if you don't have Jesus Christ. Only Jesus can fill that, the vacuum of that hole and having a right relationship with Him. And I want to ask you this. Maybe you used to seek God with all your heart and maybe you used to pursue Him and now you've gotten careless and indifferent and you've allowed the cares of this world to affect your relationship with God. And maybe you're trying to fill your black hole with sin. 
Because, you know, sin for a season is fun, but the consequences of it will ultimately move you away from God. And there'll be more to pay for what you did than the joy you'll get from having that sin. So maybe God is drawing you back to himself, giving you hunger. Because hunger is evidence that God wants to wants you to know Him and He's drawing you to Him. So maybe you want to evaluate what you've been filling your black hole with. Maybe you have misplaced hunger. And um, you keep trying to fill it with TV, online games, texting, sports, dance, art, music, shopping, movies, clothes, and makeup. Why not ask Jesus just to fill your hungry heart tonight as we say this closing prayer? Jesus says, happy are the hungry for they be filled. And this is a promise. If you will ask Jesus to fill you, he will. If you ask Jesus to save you, he will. So let's pray. Jesus, we have hunger. We recognize that nothing satisfies but you. Help us, God, uh, to, to fill that emptiness that we have with your word and through prayer and intimacy and through a right relationship with you. And Lord, I pray if there's somebody that doesn't know you, that you would speak to them in a way that they could understand and you would draw them to yourself. God, I pray that you would fill the black hole of our lives so that we can live an abundant life, a life greater than we ever imagined. Thank you, Lord, for your words. We'll live by them and not by our feelings. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.